Welcome back everybody, this is the Johnny Mayor, and I am continuing with The Legend of Zelda for the NES. So we are very quickly approaching the end of this game. We have defeated the first six dungeons of the game, now we just have two more of the Triforce dungeons to take out, and then of course the final dungeon to do. So last time we did Dungeon 6, which is actually, in many people's opinions, the most difficult dungeon in the game. <laughs> So I almost took a sword from that Lionel there in the back. Um, and that's why I kind of just wanted to do it and get out of the way. A lot of people will actually skip Dungeon 6 and uh, do 7 and then 8 first. Uh, just because whiz robes are so freaking annoying. Uh, but I like to just do it, get it out of the way, and then move on. So to access Dungeon 7, we need to use our recently acquired whistle. Um, and we have to actually blow it here in this area to open up Dungeon Number 7 from this pond. And there's actually a secret if you access a hidden cave. There's a uh, old man or an old woman who will say, you have to blow the whistle or go to where fairies aren't or don't live or something like that. Uh, and that's your little clue that you're supposed to do it there. So dungeon number seven is called Demon. Um, it's kind of in the shape of a, I don't know, a lizard head or a dragon head. Uh, a lot of the dungeons are actually shaped like heads for some reason. Um, nice, we actually got the master bat there. Um, and there is a lot of little side rooms in this dungeon. Now, basically what you get from those side rooms are keys, uh, but that's why I've been stockpiling keys up to this point. So we're gonna use all the keys we've been acquiring from the past few dungeons, uh, basically since the beginning of the game. And I didn't mean to go back through that bomb passageway, but oh well. We can quickly go back in here and get the compass by killing these skeletons. Um, because in the next dungeon we're actually going to get the almighty key, or the big key, or the master key, or whatever it's called. Uh, which actually will render all of the regular size keys basically useless. So we're gonna use all seven of our keys, maybe not all seven. Ow. Uh, maybe, you know, about four or five of them in this dungeon. Um, and then we'll use our last few keys in the next dungeon. Uh, and then we'll find that special key that'll allow us to open up all of the remaining locked doors in the game. So as you can see, there are a lot of mini bosses in this area, but fortunately, most of the rooms that they're in, you don't actually have to kill them. And this is our last bomb upgrade. So we need 100 rupees to go up to 16 bombs. So we're gonna dodge these Dodongos, and we will continue onward in the dungeon. Now, thankfully, there are no whiz robes in this dungeon. And actually, there aren't any really enemies that are that difficult. Uh, the hardest enemies are the mini bosses, but again, you can dodge most of them. Um, and then these Garayas who are throwing boomerangs at us. But if you can time it correctly and kind of stay out of their sight line, and also dodge stupid bubbles so that your sword doesn't get basically paralyzed, then uh, they're not too bad to kill. And even in their case, uh, most of the time you can just dodge them. You don't have to worry about them. So we're gonna leave Dig Dodger here alone and we'll continue onward. And this is another room where we can just skip by all of the enemies. No fuss, no muss. Now why did we get the enemy bait way back when? It is for this room. You have to feed this Moblin here so that he'll let you pass. And you can only do that with the enemy bait. Now you can actually exit out of the dungeon by continuing, um, and what will happen is you'll start at the beginning of the dungeon. Um, you'll actually get your bait back, but uh, that Moblin will actually still be gone, so it's a way to save on rupees, I guess. I mean, you don't technically have to get the enemy bait again, really, um, but I'm probably going to just because I like to have full items in my inventory, um, and so I don't like having those just empty spots. So we're gonna continue to kill things here and progress through the dungeon since we now have the map. You can see kind of the big beaked kind of maw that's open and basically where we need to get is just below the eye of the dungeon. So you'll see that flashing light, which is the Triforce piece and the boss is of course right below where the eye is. And to get to that boss, we have to actually head all the way to the upper part, the northeast 
And I didn't mean to use my bombs there. Oops. The northeast corner of the dungeon, there's a uh, secret room that has a secret passage in there. That's the only way to get to the room with the boss in. But first, we want to go directly into the eye of this dungeon. Uh, and that is because we can pick up the special item from this dungeon, which is the red candle. So all this time, we have had the blue candle, which allows you to, of course, illuminate one room. Um, but you can only use it once per room. So you can't really use it as an attack item. It's not really that powerful, actually, anyway. Um, but now we're going to get the red key. Or, not the red key, the red candle. And the red candle you can use multiple times. Uh, you can use it up to two times at once. So you can have two flames going in a particular room at one particular time. Um, but you can use it an infinite number of times within a room. There's no restriction. Uh, like I said, the only restriction is that you can only have two flames on screen at one time. So there we go. We have an upgraded item. We're going to bomb through the wall over here. Fortunately, we have our 16. So that is no problem. And then we will continue onward. Now we're going to head towards the boss's room. And uh, the boss is a repeat of a previous dungeon boss. We are not going to really see any new bosses from this point on. They're all just repeats. And in fact, it's very interesting. Some of the mini bosses from past dungeons end up being recycled again as dungeon bosses. So, you know, they kind of ran out of ideas at this point. Oh well, it's the last few dungeons. We're in the home stretch here. We're going to dodge all the useless rooms and we're just going to continue onwards. Now this is one of the few rooms where you do actually have to fight the boss. So we will have to take on Dig Dodger here. You'll notice he is uh, actually three eyeballs this time. So when he was the uh, dungeon boss a few dungeons ago, uh, there was only two little eyeballs that popped out when you blew the whistle. But uh, this version and any future version, it's actually three. And they take a few more slashes from your sword to kill than in the past. So they toughen him up a little bit. Not that they're that difficult anyway. Now we want to bomb into this room over here to the right. And this is in a lot of ways the most difficult room in the dungeon. And that is because you have to kill all of the wall masters. Um, and to do that you need to use your sword. And try not to get hit by those stupid bubbles. Because if you get hit by a bubble, the chances are very good that one of those wall masters will grab you and take you back to the entrance. But once you kill them all, they'll stop coming. And you push that little block there, and that'll access the secret passageway that'll take us to the boss. And we're almost done with this dungeon. Very quick, not too bad. Dungeon 8 isn't bad either, uh, but it's all going to come to a head in the final dungeon, which is a monstrous labyrinth of basically one-way doors and trick rooms and a lot of secret passageways. So that one's going to take quite a while to beat. But uh, we're going to finish up here with dungeon number seven, once I kill this Garaya. And the bosses again are Unicorned Dragon from way back in dungeon number one. And that is Aquamentis or something like that. So we're just going to hit him a couple times with our sword beam. He will die very quickly. We'll grab our heart. We'll grab our Triforce piece. And that is it for dungeon number seven, also known as Demon. So hopefully you enjoyed, viewers. We're going to head on to dungeon number eight, which is in a very, very weird location. But I'll get into that more in my next episode. As always, I'll see you all next time, and thanks for watching. So long.